What's up hobby friends? My name is Casey and welcome back to another miniature rescue. This week, I attempt to finish a 2000 point eBay army for Warhammer Age of Sigmar. A couple of weeks ago, I picked up this crazy Bone Reapers army off of eBay. It was in a little bit of a rough state, but nothing we couldn't take care of with a little bit of work. Once these models were prepped, I did a handful of tests to see which one I thought was the most doable in the time that we had, and at least interesting enough that I wouldn't get bored too quickly. See, the thing is, we all have these projects going all the time, whether that's painting an entire army or just putting together a warband for some skirmish game. But for one reason or another, most of us tend not to finish those projects. I know, some of us do, and that's really great. We need to hold on to that motivation. It's just that some of us need a little bit of help to get going, and more than anything, help finishing a project. My proposal for this army, and something that will hopefully help you get to the end of your current or next project in a more timely and enjoyable manner, goes something like this. You need to be invested in your project and actively wanting to work on it and paint it. It needs to be something that floats to the top of all of your other projects and keeps you engaged while you are in it. For me, having 60 skeleton dudes to paint didn't exactly push me over the edge, but getting the centerpiece for the army absolutely got me there. It also had me pushing off other projects that were technically still in the middle of on this channel. Take that, Death Guard army. There. Here's the thing though, there's nothing wrong with that. I'm motivated enough to finish this that I'm calling it right now. This army will be painted, based, and playable by the end of this video. Yeah, okay, I know how the video ends, but that's beside the point. I feel motivated, and I wanna get this done, so let's move on to the next bullet point. In the last video about this army, I went over the importance of testing out a paint scheme. To reiterate a little, you need to know a couple of things in order to apply something to an entire army. How long does it take to paint one model? And is that paint job something that you actually like? I painted two ends of the spectrum for this army, a very cool looking teal and purple scheme that would definitely stand out on the table, and a nice warm looking red blood look that was not quite as complicated, but still compelling enough for me on a personal level. As much as I actually like that first version better, it would take me far too long to paint an entire army in the time that I want to be working on this project. The last thing I want is to get halfway through and put it away for another time. I won't ever finish it. So I opted for the blood red look, partially because I know where I can go with it to get some pretty good results, but mostly because it will take almost no time at all to really get this army knocked out and playing the game. Sometimes you need to prioritize time over looks. And that's not to say you do a poor job on the quicker version, but maybe save the more complicated stuff for specific models or projects that you really see yourself putting the time into. Deadlines are important in almost anything that we do. A deadline is something that gives you that sense of urgency and purpose. You need to finish this box before that game on Saturday. Coming up, you know who you are. You have to get this army done for the next big tournament. Whatever it is, knowing that there is an end goal in sight can help you get more done, or better yet, put the project into perspective. For me, it's pretty simple. I have X amount of time this week to make this video. So this army needs to be done by a certain day of the week so that this video goes up on time. Now that we've gone over the plan and kind of the motivations, let's do a quick recap of how this army is turning out and then proceed to put in that work and get it done. Now that we have our models cleaned and ready to go, I'm gonna start with a nice black primer over everything. There is a little bit of old primer left over after the stripping, but it's so minimal that as long as the new coat isn't too thick, we'll never know that that first layer was even there. I'll follow that up with a pretty liberal top-down coating of Liquitex white ink. I want to concentrate this onto the upper half of the models, but also give some interest to things like the weapons and shields. If I can leave a little bit of shadow in strategic areas, knowing how my next layer of paint will act, I can set up each model to have a pretty nice look to it without having to do too much extra work. Next up, we have Flesh Tears Red Contrast Paint, which is one of my favorite go-tos for red. 
It's rich, but it's not too bright. It's a nice dark red, and it brings in that nice contrast like it's supposed to, right out of the bottle too. This color will be going over all of the armor panels and most of the weapons. The best thing about this paint is that it really does give good coverage in one coat. And since we use that top-down spray of ink, you can see a little bit of extra fun going on to the weapons and on the shields. This is subtle, but really adds more depth to a pretty average paint job. Anytime you can stretch just a little bit and get yourself that much more depth out of your paint jobs in your army, the better your armies will look even when you're in a hurry. Before getting to the real fun stuff, I need to inject some life into these models and a little random spice just to take them to the next level. From below, I'll randomly shoot golden high flow purple paint. This stuff is really transparent and perfect for glazing in color. I wanna give some areas a lot of this purple and others just kind of a light dusting. Once we bring in the wash and to unite everything, it should really come together and give us a unique look for these Bone Reapers. Now that the basic colors are done, I'm gonna take care of most of the rest of the models. Brown enamel wash from MIG or AK through the airbrush will stain this solid white, a very nice bone color. You airbrush this on, wait about 20 minutes for that enamel to start drying, and then you wipe it off. I'll also be using some odorless mineral spirits to take off a little bit extra on the focal points of each model. That way there's a really bright highlight on the important areas and a nice dirty bone for the rest. This part of the process really makes this army work. It just works for bones and over reds it gives a nice level of grime and I really like that. Honestly, that's pretty much it for a majority of these troops. Not much to do but basing at this point and we'll get to that pretty soon. But before we do, the big guy, the 970 point monster of a model needs some paint. So Nagash here has been through the ringer. A few broken off bits, some gaps, nothing really bad at all, and honestly, a pretty great paint job before I got it. But here we are, ready to give him a new look. I want him to be a little bit nicer than the other models. I'll also need him to match the theme of the army, so there are a couple things I'm gonna need to do. The base could use a little bit of elevating, so I'll start by using some cork and bits to make some interesting kind of cracked earth. Then I'll fill in those cracks with extra bone bits that I have laying around, some skulls and some old skeleton warrior weapons and shields for good measure. I would lay down some headstones, but uh, actually use them on a previous project on this channel. Link right here if you haven't seen the Black Coach video. It's one of my favorites. Anyways, that will do for now until we finalize all of the bases together. Let's take a look at the way that I laid out Nagash. There are bright points that will either be bone or we're gonna use red contrast over the top. The cloak specifically, I wanna go from a nice blood magic-y red at the bottom to a more purple like we used on the rest of the troops. So a little black and white gradient and here we go. I'll start with my shadows and bring in that purple over those areas of the cloak as well as give some interest to the rest of the model like we did before. Then I'll bring in that red and go over all of the armor and cloak. There was a little bit of back and forth with the purple versus the red, but it didn't take much to get a good mix. I had an idea to take the sword a little higher with some orange on the tips, but I really didn't like the way that that looked, so I switched to a brighter red paint and laid that down over the top. It actually made a pretty huge difference, and I got that red to really shine. So I continued to put the same color over any other red that I wanted to pop. I decided to paint the metallic trim and clean up any overspray on the bones. Vallejo aluminum for the trim and Pro Acryl's white for the bones. Once these details were taken care of, it was time for the enamels. I liberally coated Nagash with brown enamels and waited for him to start to dry. So all of our models have had this brown coat of enamel over the top and it's time to start revealing what's left underneath. This will ultimately be the final look for most of these models. Using some cut up sponge, I started to remove a majority of the brown enamel from the raised details of the models. The brown paint stained the bones perfectly and gave us a really nice look for all of the weapons, nice and rusty. Even over red, this paint still does its job and brings in that contrast. This is probably the most satisfying part of the process, just taking paint off as purposely as I can in order to show the focal points of each model. And anywhere I need to push a little further, I'm still gonna come in with those mineral spirits to take off even more, revealing an even brighter red or white. Again, super satisfying, and it's almost finished the army in one step.
For Nagash, I did go a little bit further and added a bunch of edge highlighting to his armor. A little bit of Fire Dragon Bright and it really sets him apart. And it also brings out those really nice subtle purple tones we laid down earlier, and just makes this model really shine in the army. But of course, in order to finish off the entire army, we still need to base it. Luckily, we've already done some of the work to get these models tabletop ready really, really quickly in the beginning. Before I even primed the models, I gave each one of them a little bit of muddy texture on the bases. That way, we're already ahead of the curve in terms of creating a cohesive army look. After all of our other paints have hit each base, we have made a mostly muddy brown looking base on each of our models. We certainly could go and just paint the base rooms black right now and call it a day, but I wanna take this a step further and bring in a touch more contrast and theme to the army. I'm gonna be using my knock static grass applicator to lay down some graveyard looking grass over the top of our muddy bases. Here's the mix I'm gonna go with. A lot of dead brown grass, which will act as kind of the base for our bases. Mid-tone green to give it some life and a pinch, pinch of bright green to add that little spicy variety. All of these grasses mixed together gives us a contrasting base that plays incredibly well off of our reds and purples. They become more vibrant and jump right off of the bases. At the same time, the dead grass is super muted and has this wonderful thematic tone to it. So here we are, at the end of the video, just before the part that everybody actually wants to see. First off, thank you for joining me on another Miniature Rescue. If you like something about this video, please like, share, and subscribe, as it really helps out the channel. I really did enjoy this project. It hit me in all the right places, and I had that burst of motivation to just get it done. Is it perfect? Of course not. But it seems like a super fun army to play. It has a cool theme going on, and I can add to this army at any time pretty quickly. Seriously. There are 2,000 points of Warhammer here for less than 200 bucks. I honestly do hope that this gives you some motivation to get more of your army done, or even just buy up an old beaten up eBay army and restore it for a future game with some friends. Either way, I imagine it's going to be a blast. Thanks again, and here are my Osiarch Bone Reapers.